Meanwhile, the Security Council hold, holds meetings and hears speeches without being able to take a fundamental decision to end the human suffering on the ground. As thousands in Israel and Palestine mourn the loved ones, as Israeli agonize over the fate of hostages, as Gazans suffer under relentless military operations that are killing civilians, including an intolerable number of children, we have the means to get something done and yet we repeatedly and shame, shamefully fail. Since October 7th, we have met several times and considered four draft resolutions. However, we remain at impasse due to international, due to internal disagreements, particularly among some permanent members, and thanks to the persistent use of the Council to achieve self-oriented purposes instead of putting the protection of civilians above all. The price of inaction is unacceptably high. The growing urgency for the families of the hostages and the unbearable pain for the civilian population in Gaza cannot be understated. The positive first step taken by the UN bodies and agencies do not go far enough as the escalation of the conflict makes the situation more dire by the hour. The relevance of a resolution of the Security Council lies on the need for sustainable, sustained humanitarian aid and for granting safe working conditions for those involved in rescuing hostages and providing humanitarian work. The cessation of hostilities is therefore to the benefit of the civilian population on both sides. All the risk of reinstating the obvious, I want to put it bluntly. There cannot be rescuing of hostages and humanitarian aid under shells. This is why Brazil and fellow E10, E10 members have been working tirelessly to try to get this council to act more decisively since the last showdown around proposed uh, resolutions. In Brazil's view, the main goals are clear the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages and the end of violence through whatever modalities can be agreed without further delay so that rapid, safe, unhindered and sufficient humanitarian aid can be delivered to the strained people of Gaza. Besides the 8,000 lives lost, many more are about to meet their fatal de destiny as hospitals have no means to keep providing basic treatment for the patients. Therefore, providing essential resources to those in Gaza, including water, food, medical supply, fuel, and electricity is urgent and imperative. Surgeries are being performed without anesthesia. Lives are being lost at hospitals for lack of energy and the most basic medic supply, medical supplies. Food and water are scarce and prices have skyrocketed and the flow of humanitarian aid so far amounts to little more than a photo op. Tanks and troops are on the ground in Gaza and time for action is running out. My questions to you all are, if not now, when? How many more lives will be lost until we finally move from rhetoric to action? It is also critical and urgent to allow for the safe and immediate evacuation of foreign nationals from Gaza and from elsewhere in the region if they feel threatened. While every state has the right and duty to protect its citizens, actions must be consistent with international law and international humanitarian law, in particular, the principles of distinction proportionality, precaution, military necessity, and humanity. The right and duty to protect a state's population cannot and should not come at the cost of more deaths of civilians and more destructions of civilian infrastructure. As the UN Secretary General Guterres has repeatedly reminded us, even wars have rules. Any indiscriminate, indiscriminate 
attack against civilians and critical infrastructure, as well as depriving civilians of basic goods and service, are morally unjustifiable and illegal under international humanitarian law. Brazil strongly condemns actions that blur the line between civilians and combatants. Wow.